Thanks for joining us. In this tutorial, we are going to scan a large source code repository using an automated static analysis tool. So let's get started. So we are going to set up the tool in the first place. Then we are going to scan the source code, the target source code. And towards the end of this presentation, we are going to analyze the results. So the tool that we are going to use today is called SpotBugs. It is an open source tool which means you can f uh, download it free of cost and uh, it supports Java language so which means our target uh, source code has to be in Java so if you see the download page you see various options for downloading and the one that you have to choose is uh, not the plugin rather the standalone tool so that is uh, spotbugs 4.0.0.zip file the target system that we chose for this demonstration is called Tolvan 2.1 and it's an open source healthcare system it's widely used in United States and uh, it's a large source code repository it has almost 3000 Java modules and the number of lines is more than 400,000 so approximately half a million lines of code so this source code was released in 2013 and the reason I'm choosing this is it has a bunch of vulnerabilities so it's going to be interesting uh, to uh, see the analysis results and in order to download this you can um, of course use uh, uh, sourceforge.net uh, website it's available there and uh, its uh, size is 154 megabytes which should not take a lot of time to download all right so once you download the spot bugs and unzip it so there's a subfolder called lib and you would see this uh, file called spotbugs.jar so it's a java archive file so you must have uh, jvm installed already on your machine and if you haven't installed it yet so I would suggest you to install it to run the tool. All right, so moving on. This is the interface of the SpotBugs tool. So let's get started with the practical demonstration of the tool now. All right, so we are going to create a new project. For that, you have to click on File and then click on New Project. Let's provide a uh, basic name for instance a sample project in this case and then let's add the repository that we just downloaded for uh, the demonstration purpose the Tolvin 2.1 so after you download you have to decompress the file so that you get the actual source files and then you click on the analyze button so this process is going to take a lot of time so I'm going to fast forward this part for you so one thing uh, is very important to note here that uh, static analysis is a very fast process so even though we have like hundreds of modules so the tool is not going to take more than few minutes to analyze the entire source code repository You may get some warning message at the end but ignore them for now and click on the OK button. And here you see the tool has flagged more than 2400 potential issues in our source code. So for today's demonstration we are going to select only few of them for discussion because of course 2400 vulnerabilities are going to take a whole lot of time for discussion. So we are going to discuss few important vulnerabilities so that you get the idea how to understand the vulnerabilities and how to go to the target source code and see what's going on there as you can see the vulnerabilities have been grouped into uh, various categories for instance correctness bad practices experimental and so on so each of these categories of course have their own meaning and if you want to know more about that Here's a link to the web page which has the description of all these categories. The very first vulnerability that we are going to discuss is related to security and its a potential SQL problem.
let's discuss a little bit about the interface so the first part of course is providing us the uh, list of the vulnerabilities that have been detected in our source code and in the lower right window we can see the description so in this case it says non constant string pass to the execute or add batch method of an SQL statement so we will come back to that so the third part is actually the location of the vulnerability so in this case it exists at line number one two three five in a file that is called show scripts mean dot java in this case and the fourth part of the screen is the window in which uh, we can load the source code because it's uh, very tiny in this case so i decided to uh, open the source code in a separate window so that we can navigate the source code easily. So you can see the file name is shorescriptsbean.java and line number is 1235. We have a problem that may potentially cause an SQL injection in our source code. So I have attached a screenshot of this source code. If you see there is uh, a select statement and we are appending various parameters for instance SPI and then we have uh, bat underscore last underscore name I'm assuming it's patient's last name then patient's first name so we are appending whole bunch of parameters into this SQL statement so before we proceed any further let me give you a very brief example like how this thing can cause a potential SQL problem so for instance we have a very simple form that accepts username and password and these usernames and passwords eventually become part of a query which are sent for execution and in this case everything seems fine although I have uh, printed the password in plain text but don't worry about that this is for the demonstration purpose only so in this case the username administrator and the password that is PWD becomes pa part of a query that is later sent for the execution so what may go wrong while we are appending these strings into an SQL query? So let's suppose we have the same form and in this case instead of uh, having the usual username and password the attacker enters something like this. So the username is administrator but the password I mean the administrator didn't know the password so he or she enters XYZ and then after that they enter or 1 equals to 1 so here it, what it looks like after the inputs are appended to the SQL query so it says select all from users where user ID equals to administrator and password equals to XYZ or 1 equals to 1 so we already know that that condition is going to be true no matter what no matter what's the value of password what's the value of user ID so this statement is going to be executed and this condition is going to be true all the times and we are going to be logged into the system regardless we know or we don't know the password so while we are appending the inputs to the SQL statements it can potentially cause the SQL injection vulnerability alright so let's move on to the next vulnerability so if you see the description it says the referenced methods have names that differ only by capitalization and if you see this uh, description here the tool has spotted these methods in two different classes so the first one is hcqm1.set patient dob that is all caps and the second one is an short script action dot set patient dob in this case we have OB in the lowercase letters so of course this is very confusing so in the object oriented programming our target is to have source code which is never replicated so if some function is being performed by one method it should be called by various classes but its source code should not be replicated into various classes so let's go ahead and see the exact classes so this is the first one it, it has uh, get patient dob in the lowercase letters and here is the other one it has get patient dob in the uppercase letters 
and of course this is a violation of uh, standard coding practices so let's move on to the next vulnerability so in this case we have a source code and the uh, flagged vulnerability says method may not close the database resource and uh, this vulnerability once again appears in the short scripts bean.java file at line number 1200 so let's jump to the source code and see what's going on so I have highlighted line number 1200 and if you see we are creating a statement class and if we keep scrolling down this class is never being closed so which is of course the violation of standard coding practices as a recommended practice we must close all the database resources for example if you're establishing a connection to the database you must close that once you have executed all the queries you need to execute and if you're creating a statement class you must close the statement class once its use is over in your program all right so let's jump to the next flagged vulnerability all right so we are going to uh, discuss this one this is really very interesting so method uses the same code for two branches so what that means is let's suppose we have an if statement and then we have an else statement but the source code that appears within the if and the else is the same which of course uh, pretty much makes it useless so we didn't even needed the if or else construct we just may have written just one line or any number of lines that need to be executed in both the cases whether the condition condition is true or false so let's uh, have a look at the source code so you can see in this square box I have highlighted these uh, if and else statements and the source code that is being executed is the method that is being called change status of prescriber and we are passing two parameters the first parameter is a method call and the second parameter is a string called approved it may be a logical mistake maybe in uh, one case it may be approved in the other case it may be rejected but anyways in this case maybe they have by mistake written the same thing all right so let's move on to the next one all right so this is very interesting it says write to static field from an instance method so we know that we have static uh, attributes or variables in our uh, class and we have non-static variables or methods in our class so but the recommended practice is if there is a static variable all the changes to those static variables should be done with the help of a static method so consider a scenario in which there are several objects and uh, they are attempting to change the value of the static variable so the static parameter is of course going to be shared by all the objects so in some scenarios the values of those static parameters becomes unreliable if they are being changed by all the objects all right so let's have a look at the source code so we have this uh, private static boolean method called initialized and we have the non-static code that is basically accessing that static variable all right so let's move on to the next one so this one says that store to the local variable what that mean is we stored something into a variable but we never used it so it's a bad practice of course so it occupies the memory space that is never utilized so let's have a look at the source code so you can see here we are creating an array list its name is result but we are not even passing it to the method that we just called right after that and we are not utilizing it even towards the end of the method so of course it's a bad practice and uh, all such uh, instances all such variables which are not being utilized by the programs in any way should be removed so that there is no wastage of space so let's switch gears and uh, let's talk a little bit about the other static analysis tools there's a wikipedia page 
which has the list of all the static analysis tools and you can see uh, the tools which support multiple languages then we have tools for dot net uh, c or c plus uh, plus i mean the language specific tools and then there are some tools which are cloud based in which you don't have to download the tool rather you just upload the source code to the cloud the analysis happens there and you get the results some of these tools are commercial others are free for some you need of course some subscription for instance uh, a cloud based tool may charge you uh, for a uh, number of lines that you analyze on their tool and uh, sometimes uh, the subscription can be monthly and sometimes it's uh, a user based subscription for example you may want a different license a new license for every new developer in your organization all right so let's move on so we have uh, open source tools like Spotbugs, and we have another one called vcg by the way the vcg supports multiple languages the cloud based source we have uh, qon in in the commercial tools category we have uh, ibm appscan and hp45 which have been there for a long time and they are one of the best tools available out there and i have seen their implementation in a lot of organizations all right that uh, pretty much wraps up our session if you have any questions you can reach me through my email thank you very much for joining